everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Mark of the Ninja. Before we get started here, I have to go with my standard preface for the past week. I am a little bit sick, got the Pax Plague coming down with it, and I am still uh, struggling with kind of like a sore throat, and you can see I probably sound like super nerdy because I'm stuffed up right now, and I play video games for a living. Uh, but I'm also doing post-commentary on this, because when I recorded this initial like 40-minute long video, uh, for some reason my live commentary got desynced to it. So I'm now here, you know, sitting in my chair drinking a, a ginger ale, in the midst of a fever, so I'm excited for the kind of commentary that might actually be presented with this. But the reason I'm here doing this and not napping is because Mark of the Ninja comes out fucking tomorrow. So this video is probably going up on the day of its release, which is Friday, September 7th. And this game is too goddamn good for me to not be here telling you and showing you all this gameplay about it. So that I can encourage you, you know, with all the Microsoft points that you have and all the influence that I have, to definitely go out and check out this game. So this is a new game from the guys at Clay Entertainment, who also did uh, Shank 1 and Shank 2. But this is a huge departure from Shank. Shank, if you are not familiar, was just kind of like a beat-em-up that was really stylish with this like kind of comic book style. But it was a little bit repetitive and shallow, whereas Mark of the Ninja is actually a 2D stealth action adventure game uh, that is really, really impressed me. I actually, like, I'm recording this on Thursday. On Wednesday, I was feeling pretty sick, so I'm like, uh, I'm not going to record. So I just laid on my couch and literally played Mark of the Ninja front to back. Which is not to say that it's um, short by any stretch of the imaginations, or any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this is probably about a six to eight hour game, I would say was probably the amount of time uh, that I put into it. So pretty standard, even a little bit on the long side uh, for an Xbox Live Arcade game. But without further ado, let's actually get started here. So you can see you've got Normal and New Game Plus. Uh, we're going to go with Normal because on New Game Plus there's actually harder enemies and certain game mechanics that change. And I believe that is our last level there. So yeah, we're going to go all the way back here. So these are just all the levels in Mark of the Ninja. So I'm going to spoil it for you. I was actually counting during the live commentary, but there's 13 levels, the 13th of which is, is just like a small, basically like ending. So you can choose whether you want to take like, to oversimplify things and not spoil anything, to choose whether you want to take like the light side or the dark side path. But it is more kind of nebulous and abstract than that. So we are going to start on probably a level about halfway, maybe a third of the way through the game. Is this the one? Which one do we end up going with here? I guess we go with the Trail of Shadow. So there is a story to the game, but I'm not going to talk about it too much. What I will talk about is this upgrade screen that we have here. So basically, if you look in the top right, we have this currency that we earn called Honor. And the way you earn Honor is by getting more points on levels, like higher scores, and also completing secondary objectives that are usually a little bit more difficult or require a different play style than you would normally take when you're playing through the game. So with this honor, you can end up buying things, like you can buy uh, different techniques that you can see here. Uh, these are basically like extra ways to stealth kill or like get around a level. You can also buy distraction items like smoke bombs that you can see right there. And I hope I show off the cardboard box down here. Yeah, I absolutely had to pick up the cardboard box. I usually use the smoke bomb, uh, but we can use that to solid snake around a little bit. And there's also attack items. So this distraction items are mostly just to kind of like misdirect guards, whereas the uh, attack items that we're going to have here are to actually do damage. So you can see I've got like ravenous insects, which I can just throw at an enemy and it will devour them. Or I can use it in another way to like throw it at a dead body and it will devour it. Because if I do it to a live body, it's going to make a lot of noise, which will possibly uh, get me seen. So I think I'm going to buy the parachute cloth here to allow me to glide. Any second now, me from four hours ago. Uh, and then beyond this, there's also kind of like loadouts you can take. Oh, I hit A by accident. You got to hit X. Okay. Can we get back? Thank you. Uh, there's also like this loadout section under style. So this is where you choose uh, like what kind of style you want to have. And you unlock these by either completing the game in the case of Path of the Mark. Or by completing, again, those secondary objectives. So you can see, if I like scroll over here to the right side, eventually, uh, there is something called Path of the Silent. Which is like that second from the right that you can see. And the way that I got this was basically by completing three stealth secondary objectives. That you'll see once we get into the level. And then this opened up this new... Kind of, not just a palette swap, but actually a meaningful loadout change that absolutely changes the playstyle that you have to have in order to succeed. So for Path of the Silent, uh, compared to Path of the Ninja, you don't actually have a weapon. So you have to get through the entire level without killing people, uh, at least in traditional ways. You can't just use your sword to kill them, which you're going to see a lot of. So I also went with the Smoke Bomb, and I went with Ravenous Insects Karajan as well. must be close, but we still need to locate him. So there are cutscenes throughout the game that tell the story. That was one of the uh, the shorter ones, but in general, there's probably less than an hour of cutscenes in the entire game. Probably, in fact, probably less than a half hour, actually. Um, and the, the story is interesting, but it's something that I'm not going to talk too much about, because A, I, I don't want to spoil it, and B, I don't think it's really that relevant to uh, whether or not you want to pick up this game, because I think what it really comes down to is the gameplay in this, which is so addictive. So what I really like about Mark of the Ninja as a stealth game is that everything on the screen that's meaningful has some kind of like visual indicator to it. Like for example, you can see the vision cone from the guard so I know exactly how far he can see, there's no second guessing there. Uh, I can see the beam on his flashlight, 
I can also get in and out of cover here. These covering objects are important sometimes. Uh, I could grappling hook up to that thing with the circle and the hook that you can see up there. And if you look closely at like the guard's feet, you can also see that they're making noise. And the circle represents how far out that noise can be seen. So when we make footfalls, we also have those circles that come out. And particularly when they're running, those circles become bigger. And what this really means for me is that it allows you to kind of, like it's every room kind of becomes this puzzle box where you can see all the elements very clearly and then from there decide what you want to do. So I think what I'm going to try to do here first off is just demonstrate that you can, if you choose, sneak past these guards without killing them quite easily uh, just by hookshotting up here and they didn't hear me because the noise circle didn't include them. And this gives us points for being undetected, but what I'm going to do after this is probably drop down and actually slaughter these guys to get some more points. So if you want to get max points on some of these enemies, it seems like the strategy that you want to do is like sneak past them and then come back for the kill. So that was a demonstration of a stealth kill, and that was actually, there's another one coming right here. So that second one that you saw is the standard stealth kill uh, that you have for basically the duration of the entire game. We can also drag bodies, but I don't need to show that off right now. Uh, but the first kill that I did, like, kind of from hanging above the enemy and then dropping down on them, that's something I actually had to purchase with honor, so you can't just do that right away. So the upgrades that you get are meaningful and actually make the game a little bit easier. I found, like, when I first played through the game and you don't have all these techniques, things are actually a little bit harder for you. And that's actually something that the, the lead designer said himself when we talked to him at PAX. But it's like, in the early game, you don't necessarily have all the te techniques necessary to make it easy for you to do, say, a no-kill run. In, on those early levels, but a new game plus it's definitely possible as you get more things. So you can see our objectives and secondary objectives here. I kind of don't have time to talk about them right now, but we will just move onwards here. What I wanted to demonstrate here is that there is some like branching paths going on. So you could choose to go up and over that building, or you can go under here. And if we go under, we have to deal with this dog who is going to be a pain in the ass for us. Because as you can see, it's got that purple circle around it. Uh, that circle doesn't represent sight, that actually represents the smell of the dog. So we can't just, for example, get behind this like dumpster here or this garbage can or whatever that is because the dog will still manage to smell us either way but we are going to have to find some way to get around this dog uh because he is not he's like in the path that we have nothing we can really do about it so i'm going to try to kill this guy as well and not actually alarm the dog i would love to get both of these guys killed without detecting them because if you get detected and an alarm gets raised you lose a lot of points and score attacking is something that i think a lot of people are going to be into in this game because it does really feel like you can, it's very easy for you to test out like different strategies and see what works out well for you. So I'm gonna just drag this body over here so that the dog doesn't smell it. And then I guess I'll probably just take off. If I was playing this right now, I would want to kill that dog. So we're seeing a lot of like pretty standard stealth kills. Uh, that was an example of an imperfect kill, by the way. If you mess up like the direction and the X button, that is a normal part of a stealth kill, you get that huge like cry from the guard and that causes like all guards in a nearby area represented by that circle to be alerted. So I did it here just because it's kind of like there's nobody else around, it's not going to cause a huge problem for me. Uh, but if you do an imperfect kill, like when you're trying to be super stealthy and there's lots of guards around, you can find yourself in trouble fairly easily. And the guards kind of work on like a caution as well as like a warning or alarm system. So when they get cautioned or like distracted by something or they think they hear you, they'll turn yellow, they'll have like a question mark above their head, and then uh, when they're actually alarmed, it'll turn red. And you'll know because they'll start screaming at you and shooting at you. So well, you, you've seen like some pretty standard stealth killing stuff here. This is going to be more of like a face-to-face -face combat. I'll probably die here, simply because, you know, as you might expect, this game actually takes place in like relatively modern era. Actually, I think we're going to succeed here. Uh, it takes place in either like the present or the near future. Let's just slaughter that dog. Um, so we are just going to hide these bodies, which will give us extra points. As you can see, there was one of those uh, secondary objectives, which is like put bodies in five dumpsters. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, we only have a sword, at least from the items that I chose to, to work with. We only have a sword, whereas almost all of the guards that we're going to come, come across are going to have like more powerful weapons. They're going to have guns, they're going to have bombs or something like that. So you definitely want to stay in the shadows. Although there is the option to take a little bit more of a hands-on approach and like really get in people's faces, you generally speaking, I'm going to restart this checkpoint and demonstrate a stealthy way to get by this, by the way. Um, but generally speaking, you want to be as stealthy as possible. And the game makes it very easy, again, to do that just because of the fact that it has all of these visual elements that kind of show you when you're safe and when you're not safe. Obviously, you don't want to be in the light either. So we're just going to kill this dude. Standard stealth kill. I'll show off a little bit more of the, the items slightly later. But generally speaking, I play without using too many of the items. I, I normally try to uh, just do things on my own merits. Like when I'm sneaking, I'll just like sneak around and not worry so much about smoke, smoke bombs and stuff like that. But we will see some of that as we get going here because there is some like substantial uh there's elements of this level shall we say it's a very long level probably the longest in the entire game uh where you will see that those are going to come very much in handy for us so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to try to distract them a little bit so i made a little bit of noise and i think they saw me in the light a little bit but what i can do after that is just kind of hide under this thing and this is another technique that i've learned uh 
by spending honor. And by doing that and waiting till the lights go off so he can't see his buddy getting murdered, I can just drag this dude down here using the Emperor's Abyss. And then if all goes well, he should be a little bit, yeah, he's alarmed right now, or cautioned at least, and then he's going to walk over here and I'm going to be able to do exactly the same thing to him. So the AI, generally speaking, is not super intelligent, like it, it, and I think that's a design issue, not a, not a programming issue. An issue is not necessarily the word I want to use either. Uh, the AI is very predictable, which I think is one of the game's strengths, actually, because it does allow you to kind of like reliably do the same thing over and over and over. Uh, not necessarily meaning in a, like a repetitive way, like, oh, you just do the same kills over and over and over, but in, this, in the way that you can know, like, in the same way that the grocery store is reliable, you know they're always going to have eggs. Like, this game is reliable, you know that that kill is always going to work on that guy. So that allows you to plan your, your strategy. And we will put another uh, body in that dumpster as we move ahead here. So yeah, this is probably a, about a half hour long level, maybe longer than that actually, maybe like 35 minutes. And this takes place about maybe a third of the way through the game. This is the first level I think where you're really given like a substantial amount of freedom. There's a lot of like tutorialization that happens in the, the early levels. But, you know, not a whole heck of a lot, considering that this, this game is quite long. So I'm just looking on the map here to figure out where the heck we're supposed to go. Um, yeah, like, the game is, like, six hours long, and I'd say, I guess, uh, this level isn't considerably longer than a lot of other levels. Uh, you've got about 12 levels and about six hours, so, you know, you can do the math on that one, probably. It's half an hour per level, roughly. Um, but yeah, we're gonna move up here and try to do some more stuff. And I'm actually unsure as to what happens next. We're actually gonna learn about lockpicking now, I think. So the way that lockpicking works is actually very simple, you just hold the B button. There are perks that you can get that will increase the speed of your lockpicking, but you don't have to worry about tools like a multi-tool or, or, you know, bobby pins or anything like that. So, the power is like coming out and, uh, out and in? That's not really the sexual I imagery I'm looking for here. The lights are going on and off because we've kind of like shorted the power a little bit. So we're just gonna hang out up here, as you know this guard will barely not be able to see us because of that vision cone pretty much just skirting the bottom of this pot. We should be able to jump down on top of him. And just kill him. And we could drag his body somewhere if we wanted to, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be that important right now. You want to hide the bodies in situations where guards are going to come across them. Although sometimes it can be a good idea to actually let guards see bodies and they'll either get terrorized or they'll start looking around for the source. And this is a part where things are going to go a little bit rougher for me. So what I am going to demonstrate here, I think, is uh, how you can deal with traps in the game. So one thing we could do, there's a, an upgrade, a scroll, which is actually something we can get for points and honor. Uh, I'm using Farsight here just to see what's going on in that room. Uh, that just allows us to see through walls, basically. And uh, what I could do is just run in here under the laser trap, try to get it and get out before the laser touches me, which will trigger a machine gun that'll hurt me. What I'm going to do instead is freeze time here, and this is how we interact with objects in Mark of the Ninja. So I'm going to throw a smoke bomb. That will actually obscure the laser, allowing me to get out of here. But I make a pretty huge mistake, because then the laser eventually touches me and sets off the alarm, and now I have that door open, so the laser's coming like all the way in, so it's gonna be a little bit of a stretch for me to actually uh, be able to get through here, but I think it's gonna be fine as long as we close the door. Might have been a little close for comfort there, but that's okay. We're gonna have a cutscene here in just a second, which should represent a checkpoint as well. Uh, by the way, those scrolls, if I didn't mention, give you honor, so that honor, you know, can be used later to purchase upgrades and, you know, various other materials and stuff like that. So, in a second here, I think I was explaining exactly what I've already explained before, how, like, I like how the mechanics are so clear and actually easy to execute. By the way, this is the darts. We have unlimited amounts of darts compared to uh, smoke bombs and ravenous insects, which we have very limited amounts of, but we get refilled a little bit at each checkpoint. So we're going to exit here, and you will see the cutscene, and I'll take a sip of my ginger ale. So all they're demonstrating here is this new enemy type, and there are, you know, probably half a dozen... Maybe a little bit more than that, maybe six to eight enemy types that you come across in the game. There's like standard guards, there's guards with like gas masks, there's elite guards, there's dogs, and you know, bosses and stuff like that. But what we're gonna do is just ignore that guy for now, and try to d deal with some uh, cool stuff up here. So I think what I'm gonna try to do here is actually distract this guy, or maybe I'll just use ravenous insects. I can't remember what I did here. So I'm, what I'm gonna do here is just actually mark my target for the darts, which is gonna be that light up there, and that will distract him a little bit. But it won't break the light, because that light is armored. And then what I will do is wait for him to come back, because I actually did not expect him to jump down there. Uh, but I will wait for him to come back, and then I should be able to pretty easily stealth kill him, and then just, you know, go about my merry way. So this is a game definitely where, where patience is a virtue, but it's not as slow of a stealth action game as, you know, I'm used to. I'm just distracting him again, so hopefully he comes back down here. Might have to use Farsight just to see where this guard is, because right now, yes, <laughs> I can predict my own actions very well. Uh, because, yeah, the guard was confusing me because I couldn't actually see him. Uh, but as he moves over here, and if I can stay out of the light, I should be able... To, I'll probably distract him again with the darts here. And then move more quickly than I did last time. I think this will work. 
Yes, okay. So we can kill him in the light as long as no other guards are looking at us. But I totally forgot what I was going to say a second ago. Oh, it's it's not as slow of a stealth action game as, like, Splinter Cell or something. Even though it does require patience, usually you're just watching the guards pattern for, like, 10 to 15 seconds, and then you figured it out, and you know it for good. Generally speaking, there's guards who stand still, and then there's guards who patrol. So as long as you learn all the guard types, you're going to be okay. Now, this is a tricky situation. If we just drop straight down, he'll see us because we're in the light, even though his vision cone doesn't go that far. So what we're going to try to do is jump outside of the range of the light and land on that boardwalk without making enough noise so that he can hear us within that, like, audibility circle that's going to come up. So we're, we'll probably execute this jump in any second now, please, old me. Oh, we're actually I'm focused on stopping time there. By the way, anytime you use an item, you stop time, which I think is a really good way to do things, because you don't really feel that pressure to get, like, killer shots out of the way uh, with no like with no time to prepare. I think it, it really works well. Oh, actually, we're just going to devour this guy with ravenous insects. That's another way to do things. Uh, I probably would have done it differently right now, just on my mood. And actually, this is cool. So we devoured that guy with ravenous uh, insects, and that made this guard terrorized. He noticed that uh, the guard was getting like cut up by the insects because of that huge audibility circle as the guard screamed. And then this guy is now terrorized. And when a guard is terrorized, I guess we're just going to slaughter him here. Uh, but what happens is that he gets like trigger happy, and sometimes he will even end up shooting some of his own teammates or some of his own like um, comrades, basically. So there was one cool mission where you're in like this catacomb area, and one of the stealth objectives or secondary objectives is um, this is the story I'm telling right now in the live commentary, by the way, is um, kill all six or seven guards in the catacombs without being detected. Or with stealth kills, actually, is the way that it described it. So I killed like five of them, or four of them, I guess, and then I killed the fifth one, and there were three in a room together. And by killing the fifth one, the sixth one got terrorized and shot the seventh one to death. And I was so pissed off, because I was like, oh man, I was like in, within my grasp. But that's the sort of thing that can happen. So we should be able to pull this guard through the door. Again, this is another uh, stealth kill that, or stealth technique that I have learned uh, by spending honor. Generally speaking, like I said, uh, my playstyle is to buy like as many of those techniques as possible, and then use those for stealth kills. So I can just like hang out in doorways or on perches and stuff, and take enemies out uh, very easily. But definitely, if you wanted to try out like more of an item-heavy style, uh, the option exists for you there because you can buy upgrades for your items as well. At least one upgrade for each item. And here's an example of that. So I have a ton of honor. I'm probably not going to actually buy anything. But I might demonstrate Path of Silence right now. So basically what Path of Silence does, and I'll move to the cardboard box. No, I'm just going to go with the noisemaker. Um, so, actually, no, I guess I, I do go with the cardboard box. Stop getting ahead of myself and behind myself at the same, same time. So we're playing Path of Silence now. What this means, in case you've forgotten, is that we actually cannot use our weapon for stealth kills anymore. So we've got to be 100% like non-lethal, and we don't even have a sword anymore. So we can punch, but I've never actually gotten into combat with an enemy well, using Path of Silence. The other thing, the benefits of Path of Silence, you can carry two distraction items. So now I have not only the smoke bomb, but the cardboard box as well, although I'm not sure if I'd use it at any point. Uh, but additionally, I didn't mean to go here, I think. Oh, I was just checking out what seals, because I, like, I need one more combat seal in order to unlock uh, whatever that path is. Path of Might, it looks like. Uh, and, you know, a few more aggression seals, and one more... Terror seal to get Path of Nightmares. I think I do unlock Path of Might in this one, actually. Not to spoil it for you, but anyway, the the good things about Path of Silence uh, are that A, it mixes up your playstyle in a meaningful way, but B, when you run, it actually does not produce any sound. So now you can run, like, sprint away from guards, and it, it will actually still just be, like, complete silence, which is awesome. Look at all the guards patrolling near that tower. And see those antennas on the roof? It must be a communication tower. There could be something inside to help us find Karajan. Alright, so this is a part that can uh, sometimes be a little bit tricky. The background for this is basically we're breaking into this like castle or tower uh, to catch this guy Karjan, who ordered an attack on our clan, our village, our dojo, whatever. And we're basically, it's just a, a one big revenge plot. So as you can see, as I move around here, I'm, I'm not making any noise whatsoever. And I might try to use my cardboard box for a second. Is that what I'm going to do here? Yes, so as you can see, I've got a Solid Snake S cardboard box there. There's also a stealth upgrade, or an upgrade that you can get for that that gives you a stealth kill. But I'm not sure if I show it off in this video. You know, some things are sacred. If you're throwing a Metal Gear Solid reference in like that, maybe it's better if you see it for yourself. That's my expectations of what the developers wanted anyway. So, uh, we just demonstrated our glide a little bit there. There's a bit, a bit of a video skip for me. I'm not sure if it's, that's going to end up in the final product, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Just a couple of frames. So down here, there is actually a, a scroll, or an artifact, anyway. The artifacts give you points that uh, ultimately contribute to your final tally. So usually, like, there's, like, one... You get one honor just for beating the level, 
By the way, I should point out the difference in playstyle here. Normally, I would just like poke out, kill this dude, drag his body in. The other guy would get distracted and come to check out what's going on and then kill him and drag his body in as well. So now I have to like meaningfully mix up my playstyle and just sneak by these guys undetected in order to actually progress here, which I think is really cool. I like that it's not just like palette swaps or like aesthetic changes. Like the paths that you take, at least Path of Silence, I, I can't speak, I guess, with respect to the other ones, uh, but the paths you take meaningfully change uh, the way that you have to play the game. So what we're going to do here, I think this, this involves a little bit of trial and error for me, is we're going to sneak by this guy. So we distracted him by shooting a dart at the light, and then we're just going to run by him here. And I'm not sure where we go from here. I guess I'm looking at my map, which is exactly what I wanted to do right here as well. Uh, and then we're going to sneak by this guard, but the way I do this is not the best way that I possibly think. So what I'm thinking is, like, climb up the right side, see if there's guards, and there are. So I know I need to be on the left side, but oops, I dropped down, like, directly in front of that guard instead of making the jump. So I'm just going to let this guy kill me. Again, generally speaking, if you're not, like, right next to a guy and he can't shoot you because his gun barrel is, like, poking out behind your back or something, uh, generally speaking, you do die pretty quickly. So we're going to start this one over again, and there might be a little bit of trial and error here. It kind of reminds me of, like, Super Meat Boy in the sense that I, I die somewhat often, or I feel like I want to restart somewhat often because the goals that I set for myself uh, become unobtainable. Like, if there's, if I make a goal for myself to, like, kill no guards, and then I accidentally kill one, I'm like, okay, we'll just restart. But the good news is that restarting doesn't really feel that detrimental, and that's good because there's a certain element of trial and error in the game, but restarting doesn't feel that detrimental simply because uh, you restart so quickly and the checkpoints usually are pretty close together. So that distraction didn't work on those guards because they were outside of the area where they could hear it, what I'm gonna try to do is maybe throw a smoke bomb in here, and then quickly grappling hook up, and then try to figure out where I need to go next. So the smoke bomb is gonna obscure their vision. However, then I think I like climb into the light here, or the smoke bomb just runs out, and they just pump me full of lead. So that was another poor decision. So this is basically me demonstrating, not on purpose, this is by accident, but demonstrating a number of ways that if you don't play um, Mark of the Ninja with, with caution, if you just kinda go in with reckless abandon, then sometimes things are not gonna work out perfectly for you. So we are going to do exactly the same thing we've done, because we know that this this is what I mean by like the reliability in Guard AI, is that it allows me to like figure out the puzzle piece by piece, because I know that the elements of the puzzle are reliable, if that makes any sense at all. I know this guy's not going to wake up right away. I know that if I climb up here, I can uh, like grappling hook up to that thing and it's not going to fall down or something like that. So what I'm going to do here is I think I have to look at my map and figure out where I'm supposed to go after this. Yeah, but I think I want to go to that vent that is just directly under the spotlight. So the way I want to make this happen is similar to the way I did it before, but I want to tweak it a little bit. So I want to throw a smoke bomb like right down at the feet of these guys just talking and smoking here. As now I'm finally seeing where the objective is. Uh, but I also want to make sure that I stay out of the light so that guard on the left doesn't see me. So if I can just sneak very quickly into that vent and manage to stay out of the light as well, I think we'll, we'll find ourselves in a, a good position here. Like right now might be a good time to do it. So we're going to throw that. I can't see! And then we're just going to get up here very quickly, dive in. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a puzzle. We learned this technique called the spider dangle. And basically what this allows us to do is, like, we can hang down from a grappling hook. By the way, that, that went totally differently uh, than it went the first time I played through the game, where I actually did not have Path of the Silence, so I could just, like, kill those dudes no problem. I suppose I could have... Actually, I did not have Ravenous Insects. I was going to say if I had Ravenous Insects, I could have just thrown it at them. We're going to disable the power here, and then hit this switch right here. Uh, which will open the door for us and also gives us access to uh, another seal so that might open up some extra chances for us unfortunately uh, some extra chances for new paths i should say so i can't just walk out of here because there's this guard here normally if i had my weapon i could just stealth kill him but again we have this path of the silence condition on us or path of silence condition on us so that we have to uh, you know find a different way to go about things which i really like so one thing we could do we could distract this guy um we could throw a smoke bomb at him so he can't see we're just going to check out where our objective is here um I'm not, actually not sure what I do here. I could possibly, like, throw a, a dart at him. That would get him to come over in this direction, and then I could just walk past him. Or we can try to get out uh, the same way that we got in, which I think is actually what I end up doing. Now, unfortunately, I can't knock out that light because it's armored. But I should be able to just, like, grappling hook up to here quickly, and then things get a little tricky here because you want to jump outside of their vision cones, but you also don't want to make a whole lot of noise. But managed to make that work, although it was very, very close. And here... We actually really have to worry about this guard, so I don't know what we're going to do here. Might just end up using a smoke bomb, which, yeah, I think is a, a necessary decision, maybe. Oh, maybe not. I guess we're just going to go for, for broke here. We actually made it, oh, just outside, or just inside of that cone of light. But if we hide up here, we should be okay. So whenever guards detect you, the downside is you still lose points, so we lost, like, 800 points for that, which is pretty substantial. However, uh, once, like, eight seconds pass where they can't see you, things are going to be not so bad for you. 
So these guards have come to examine. We're going to have to watch out for this dog. And now I'm feeling like I'm playing a little bit uncomfortably fast. You really want to maintain your patience when you're playing this game. And again, we are still doing Path of the Silent here. I alerted those birds, like startled them, and then those birds startled that guy. But I just really want to get the hell out of the way of this dog here so we can drop down. And I think we finish playing with uh, Path, Path of the Silent here. Or Path of Silence, I always forget. Uh, because there's another upgrade station down here. And here we just end up going back to Path of the Ninja. It was just a way for me to basically demonstrate how there's different play styles in the game and how those uh, can affect the style that you have. So definitely there's more than one way to play through Mark of the Ninja without any question. So we're going to move inside of the, uh, the compound here. I want to talk a little bit about my overall impressions of Mark of the Ninja because I've been having so much fun just kind of like displaying and talking about what I'm doing in the game. I haven't had a chance to talk about it from like a, a wider perspective or like a meta perspective or something like that. Uh, this is... I think inarguably, at least in my opinion, one of the, the best Xbox Live Arcade titles this year. And, I, and when I say that, uh, I'm putting that up there with like the three big ones that I've really loved so far this year. I'm putting that up there with like Fez, Spelunky, and Trials Evolution. I think this is a game that is on par with those for sure. Definitely in the same league. I'm going to shut up for this cutscene. There. So yeah, I think this game is kind of a surprise because when it was announced, people were like, oh, it's the Shank, guys. I mean, I, it's cool that they're doing something new, but... You know, Shank didn't necessarily reinvent the wheel, and in some ways Mark of the Ninja doesn't really reinvent the wheel either. However, it is a whole hell of a lot of fun, and it has a ton of replay value. And, you know, for 15 bucks, you're going to get a lot of entertainment out of this. I would basically classify this as a must-buy for Xbox Live Arcade this year, provided that you have the, the money to spare, of course, and you didn't just blow, like, 60 bucks on Dark Souls last week or something. Not that that would be blowing money, because Dark Souls is a great game. But anyway, what I'm supposed to do here is follow this guy with the blue circle around him, and as I follow him... He actually has a key card that I'm going to, or not a key card, he has a, like a GPS kind of, like a tracking device that is connected to the man who actually led the attack on our village. So I'm going to try to steal this away from him or, you know, take it off his dead body and then we will uh, complete the mission. But there's still definitely like 13, 12 minutes left in this mission. This is a long ass mission. Uh, Multi-phase, that's for sure. So we're just using our far side there to see who we're following. Uh, the far side is... Very useful, but also there are some times when I feel like the far side is a little bit cheap to use, so I try not to use it very often. So we are just going to follow this dude as much as possible. Try to stay out of his vision cone. I almost dropped down here, but then I saw that he looked back and I was like, okay, it's probably not a good idea for me to do that right now. So we will now take these vents underneath and we can still kind of like see the vibrations from their footsteps, so we know where they are. Well, we know where they are if you look closely there. And I think this is a part where I die fairly frequently. We're going to wait for this guy to get up, and then we're going to get back to doing what I do best. My personal playstyle, which is just like kill with reckless abandon. So we're going to jump up here, we're going to stealth kill this dude. And then we're going to drag his body and put it down in this hatch, which is going to give us extra points. And also mean that he cannot be uh, found. But then we're going to make a huge mistake with this one, where I'm going to jump up, and I am going to stealth kill. And by the way, stealth killing on stairs totally works. This is not an NES Castlevania game. But then I'm like, ah, I probably don't need to hide that body, no problems. Unfortunately, the area that we're about to enter, as I look for a secret entrance, I'm going to take this vent down here, uh, is packed full of nonsense that is going to be annoying as hell for me to deal with. Even just this security system right Get here closer. is going to be annoying as hell. And by the way, I also have to worry... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I also have to worry about uh, keeping the target in range. Otherwise, I won't be able to do... Uh, I, I won't be able to follow him. Like, it'll just... I'll lose him and then the mission will end. I'm sure if you've played video games before, you understand how things work in, like, following missions like that, particularly if you played Assassin's Creed before in your life. Synchronization failed! Uh, so what I want to do is actually... That's the dude with the uh, tracking device. Unfortunately, as I exit here, uh, I think he is going to find the body of the guy that I killed, which is really where I made a huge mistake. Uh, so that is just going to end the mission for us right here. So I think what I have to do almost is basically like sprint out and by sprinting I actually created a distraction for those guys as well so they're gonna probably be busy for at least a second uh, looking around inside to see the source of that and then I'm gonna take some time here and try to actually you know grab this body and move it out of the way this is the only part that I've ever spent or the only time in this game where I've ever found like an issue with the controls is like there's a body and two staircases Get intersecting closer. and um, the game is just like I don't know what to do I think we might lose the target here actually Ah, uh, but maybe not. Oh, we actually got back just in time. So I could pick the lock here and then try to make my way around this dog, but this is not going to be easy. Maybe if I grappling hook and then just immediately, like, sprint over here or walk slowly. All right, we managed to make it there, so that's going to be probably a new checkpoint for us. Uh, and now we just have to, like, get in that room, I believe. We do have to watch out for uh, whatever this guard is going to do. 
But I think, yes, there is a tunnel that leads underneath. So lots of tunnels going on in this game. Lots of, like, branching paths. You can go for a head-on assault. It's probably not going to work out for you. We'll have to find another way around. So basically, uh, this guy is trapped in the room because there's no way for us to actually get in there. Like, he's trapped from our side. Uh, because we can't get in there without actually, you know, having a key code or something. So what we're gonna try to do is disable all the security. We did get detected there, but that allowed us to perform two stealth kills, which are gonna give us more points than uh, we lost for being detected. But still, that was not the ideal way to do things, but it, it, it worked. And what we do here is something that I think when I played through it, actually, like, this guy is scared, but we can't get through that door. Uh, when I played through this, actually... I was like super confused about where to go from here, but what happens is actually pretty goddamn easy. So what we're gonna do is like slaughter this guard. I think that dog is gonna see us, by the way, as I'm doing this. Nope, very close though. And then the dog is gonna come uh, under here. I don't know if he's gonna come all the way over here actually. If he does, sometimes you can stealth kill dogs. I'm not sure what the criteria is. I, I find it sometimes it's impossible. Oh, he's noticed me because of the smell. So I'm gonna jump out uh, and just execute him if I can. Where? There we go. Just make sure we cut his throat. A hound's death. Hound's slumber, I guess I should say. Uh, and then we have to kind of look around for what the heck is, is coming up next. So, all the bodies have been taken care of in this neighborhood. But past me is confused about what the fuck to do. I'll give you a secret for future me and every future you who are watching this video right now. We need to find some way to give that switch power so that it gives uh, that hatch power and allows it to open. So what we need to find is basically just like a terminal. There are puzzles in the game like this. This is as puzzly, I think, as I would describe the game ever getting. Although there are occasionally challenge rooms, uh, and in those challenge rooms, occasionally there will be puzzles. Uh, but the puzzles, you'd never describe this as a puzzle platformer by any stretch of the imagination. We did just complete a seal, though. We killed six of the courier's guards, which I thought is something that would definitely not happen, considering how stealthy I was being, at least at the very start, before I started killing dudes left, right, and center. Uh, but I am going 100% the wrong way here. So let's just... Continue back here. I know that the terminal is somewhere around here, but I've forgotten exactly where it is. I think it's, like, under this room on the left, actually. It's, like, um... I don't know. We'll wait and see for a second. It's not down there. I promise you that. Uh, it's not in here, either. In fact, I have no idea what's going on in here, but, you know, picking logs gives you extra points anyway. So no, no harm done there. I think that's just a door that we can hide in, which is not really necessary for us right now. Uh, so we can just get the fuck out of here. That's our laser trap that we smoke bombed past earlier. Again, this is probably the most stuck that I've ever been at Mark of the Ninja. Most of the time, when you are moving around, you can just, like, look on your map and be like, Oh, that's the one area that I haven't looked at yet. So, I think we drop down here. Yes, and then when we drop down here, there's, like, a security system that will set this whole thing in motion. And then we'll start gearing up for the end of the level. And again, this is fairly early on in the game, so the skills that I'm demonstrating here... On your first playthrough, uh, the techniques, I should say, maybe you have better skills than me, but the techniques I'm going to demonstrate, or I have demonstrated, are not going to be available to everybody on their first playthrough, depending on how much honor you get uh, on those very, very early levels. But, you know, you, you get a feel for the general game, and I think now you get a feel for the progression as well. So let's come back up here. And now I've given power to the switch, which I think is going to allow me to then open up this ventilation duct. I can then climb through there, and that's a checkpoint. So we, at every checkpoint, I think it... It might not refill your distraction and uh, attack items, but it does uh, at least give you some sort of refill. Like, it doesn't, might not give you a complete refill, but it gives you some. Now, there's two ways that we can go about this puzzle right here. Well, there's probably more than two ways, but there's two general approaches, I think, uh, that you can use. I'm going to use a different one than the one I'm going to describe. What you could do is just, like, get up here, stealth kill this guard on the ground, and then, as you can see here, when guards move past laser traps, the laser traps actually deactivate. So what I could do is, like, jump up here and kill him, and then drag his body across the laser traps, and I wouldn't have to worry about them or waste smoke bombs or anything to get by. Unfortunately, since I dragged him down here and there's no way to get him back up, I am going to have to get around these laser traps, uh, you know, kind of by my own, uh, my own skill here. But the, it's not impossible to do. What we can just do is either throw a smoke bomb that allows us to get by, or we can hide behind some potted plants here. I guess we're going to throw a smoke bomb, but it would have been much easier to just hide behind the potted plants. We're gonna get out here, we're gonna distract this guy, or not distract him, we're just gonna debowel him right here. And continue moving onwards, because there's not too many guards left in this mission, I think. But this guy is now on the case, because he heard his buddy scream, I think, or he heard, like, a door open. And as he walks down here, I should be able to murder him with reckless abandon. Uh, it's unfortunate, because I think the last thing he's gonna see is his best friend's corpse as I kill him. Oh, well... So again, this is another technique that I've learned, is being able to hide in these kind of like environmental elements, and then later, uh, 
stealth kill out of them. You have the ability to just hide in them from the get-go, but to, in order to stealth kill from them, uh, you need to actually uh, buy a technique with honor. So, we are going to open this door. I don't think there's anybody in here. There's just a switch. So we hit this switch, and then this opens the ventilation duct. And then via the ventil ventilation duct, I think we enter like our last two or three rooms of this level. Again, very lengthy level, but not necessarily misrepresenting. That was very close right there. Not necessarily misrepresenting the, the actual length of levels. Like, I would say probably 20 to 25 minutes is your average. This one's going to run a little bit longer. And I've actually, it'll probably take you longer than this one. You play it because this, uh, this is my second time playing through the, the game. I'm not saying that necessarily I'm amazing at Mark of the Ninja or anything like that. But what I am saying is, you know, your first time through, you're probably more liable to make mistakes. And, you know, it's going to be more difficult for you because you won't have all the techniques that I had either. So I got very lucky to not be seen there, all thanks to my use of the, like, flying squirrel mechanic. Again, another technique that I had unlocked with honor. And now we are in our final two rooms here. So the first room is just one that we are going to have to uh, grappling spider down. And by doing this, we should be able to access that switch at the bottom and then activate it. Oh, not this time. <laughs> uh, we can grab that switch at the bottom and activate it. And that will deactivate all of the lasers, which will allow us to fall into that final room there. Uh, which is actually where the guy with the tracking device is contained. So when we drop down here, we'll have two choices. We can either kill him and take the tracker, or we can just steal it from him. And, you know, I think one of the seals is based on uh, just stealing it, not killing him. But I've already stolen from him, so I'll just demonstrate that again. So first I distracted him, then I just walked up, stole it quickly using, like, the same command as the stealth kill. And then we actually have to... I'm going to skip by the cutscenes, by the way, because I don't necessarily want to show off spoiler content this late in the game. Uh, now our only objective is to escape, so all we have to do is uh, get down to that X in the bottom right corner there. But there are going to be dudes on my ass the whole way. And I've totally forgotten where I'm supposed to go. Oh, right, you have this elevator shaft, but the problem is you need to get to the top of the elevator shaft. Unfortunately, the elevator's blocking it, so the first thing we have to do is I... Ooh, what am I going to do here? I can either kill the dog first or kill the man first. I think I end up killing the man first. And then thinking that the dog won't find me, and then I think I end up slaughtering the dog. Which is probably... Uh, I should have done things in the opposite order. Although the dogs are less dangerous uh, than, the, than the soldiers, I think. So we slaughtered that dog. We will now uh, open this door. This doesn't actually open this door. What it does is it moves the elevator down, as I can see right now. But unfortunately, this door doesn't open all the way, so it's back to the vents for us. And we will now climb up and around here, doing some Super Meat Boy-esque wall jumps. Until we find an open vent that we can enter in. And this will be like our linear path for the end. And by the way, I'm not going to do the same thing here that I did before. Now I'm going to use the plants to actually get by. Uh, to demonstrate that you don't necessarily need to use smoke bombs for every single laser trap that you come across. Even if it, that is what I do almost every single time I come across them. Because, uh, I don't know, I like it to be a little bit more guaranteed, a little bit more reliable. So we're just going to watch out for this. Uh, by the way, there's like two kinds of like, well, well, that's a demonstration of it. I was gonna say, there's two kinds of laser traps. There's the thin ones, which trigger like machine guns or rockets that shoot at you. And then there's the thick ones, which actually just like fry you. So what we're gonna do here is just use our darts to destroy all these laser traps. Drop down here. I said drop down here. Uh, and repeat the process, essentially doing the same thing here. I'm gonna do a little grappling spider in order to get down there to a section where I can hit both of these. Awesome. And then we will drop down to the next section where I think we're just stuck. Like we can't get by these at all. Unless we had like incredibly well placed smoke bombs or something. But I'm pretty sure we're at the end of the level here, but if I remember correctly, this just becomes like a mad dash. Like, I look at this and I'm like, oh, fuck it, you know? Like, <laughs> I have no chance. I'm gonna definitely trigger somebody. So yeah, I've triggered the guards, and now I'm just like, okay, time to run. And just by jumping, sometimes you can avoid most of the bullets, but you can see I only have one health that's, like, under my score right now. But that is going to do it for this level of Mark of the Ninja. So I'd say that's pretty representative uh, of the actual... Like, the stuff that you come across in the actual game. It's not a game where you're ever going to come across, like, one level that's a rail shooter or something like that. There's some levels that have a little bit more story heft to them, if that makes any sense at all. But in any case, that is Mark of the Ninja pretty much in a nutshell. I wanted to show you guys off uh, a lot of the gameplay and why I enjoy this game so much. I really, again, it's been a long time since I sat down with a game and played it front to back just like in one afternoon. And it's been a long time since I played a game that motivated me to record so much when I was sick. And I think my fever is starting to break now, so it is probably time for me to go. But in any case, definitely, definitely uh, make sure that if you're interested, you check out Mark of the Ninja. Coming out this Friday on Xbox Live Arcade, it's going to be 1,200 points, a.k.a. $15. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.